Hello, YouTube. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the 2018 Mac Mini. I've had this machine basically since it came out back in late 2018. I've had it since about December. And uh, it's been a great little machine, I have to say. So let's start by the outside tour. Of course, a change from the previous generations of the Mac Mini, this one is now in space gray only, which is very nice. And uh, it uh, basically remained all the design elements of the previous generations, starting from the 2010 and 2011 Mac Minis. Of course, stand starting with the 2011, they got rid of the optical drive, and uh, the design basically stayed the same ever since. And of course, between 2014 and 2018, there weren't any Mac Minis made at all. So on the back of the machine here, we find a very good port selection. We have the we have the power input over here, gigabit Ethernet here, optional uh, 10 gigabit for a bit extra, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, big ass vent, two USB Type A ports, USB 3.0 of course, headphone jack, and the power button is over here. So you might wonder why does it need uh, this big up vent here? Well, basically. Uh, contrary to the previous generation of the Mac Mini, the 2018 model uses desktop CPUs. This particular one is equipped with the Core i5-8500B, which is a 6-core, six 6-threaded six processor from Intel, the Coffee Lake generation. And, uh, yeah, it's a pretty powerful CPU. Boosts up to about 4 gigahertz, and uh, it does so pretty well. I've used it for Final Cut a bit, and uh, it's definitely a monster when it comes to video editing, that's for sure. Uh, other specs, basically you can buy these ranging from a Core i3 quad-core, all the way up to the 6-core 12-thread Core i7, and uh, that's about 300 bucks more, I believe, just to get the uh, hyper-threaded i7 in there, which may or may not make sense when you actually go for uh, a video editing workstation with an external GPU, for instance. You can definitely make uh, use of that, but I decided to go with the middle ground model, 256 SSD, bought it with 8 gigs of RAM, but uh, basically decided immediately to get uh, 16 gigs for this, and uh, I put it in myself. Because also, contrary to the previous generation, you cannot upgrade the storage, but you can upgrade the RAM. And RAM upgrades are very cheap, DDR4 is next to nothing these days, so that was a very worthwhile upgrade. So, uh, yeah, that's basically the outside tour of the machine, because on the bottom is basically nothing, and the top is just the Apple logo that uh, handles Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So, uh, let's get it set up and take a look at how it performs. Just as a little uh, addendum to the video here, um, I also have this Sitachi dock for the Mac Mini, which slots underneath. It sits on these rubber feet right here, and here are some vents to uh, dissipate heat. And it's overall a very nice compact unit, and it only needs one USB-C port here. I believe this is actually USB-C and not Thunderbolt, but that's fine. Uh, on the front of this thing we have a micro SD card reader, regular SD card reader, another headphone jack that you can actually use in conjunction with the one on the Mac Mini already, three USB-A ports and another USB-C port. All through this little cable right here. And just to show you how it works, you basically just lift up the Mac Mini, you put it on there, and put in the USB cable, and uh, there you have it, Mac Mini all set up. So now it's ready to be powered on. Of course there is no bong, because uh, Macs don't have that anymore, and we should be able to see it boot up on this display here. Talking about accessories, of course, you need to have the uh, graphite, or space gray rather, graphite's old school, uh, the space gray uh, keyboard with numpad, and the space gray magic mouse too. All very nice. And as you can see here, we're booting up into macOS Catalina. Almost right. That's just to uh, decrypt the hard disk. And there it is. 
I have it set into the automatic mode, so it switches to uh, light and dark mode as the day progresses. Let's enable Wi-Fi so we have some kind of uh, network connections going on. Let's see what can I show you right now. Let's go for a Blackmagic speed test so you can see what the SSD in this is capable of. Again, this is not the exact base model, which is a 128 SSD. This is the 256. I think that was the more reasonably priced option. And as you can see, it is pretty fast. There's 1.3 gigabytes uh, read or write, or two, and 2.7 gigabytes read. So it's definitely a very nice little NVMe SSD. And here we have the specifications of the machine. Alright, 3 gigahertz, 6 core Intel Core i5, 16 gigs of 2400 MHz DDR4. This machine can go up to 2666, but uh, that was a bit pricier, a bit harder to get, so I decided against it. And USD Graphics 630, which is the main downside to the Mac Mini 2018 in general. It has no graphical power whatsoever. It's definitely uh, not for graphical work. However, it does work very well with uh, Final Cut Pro. In regard to the Intel QuickSync capabilities, it will render out pretty fast considering what kind of machine it is. I've pitted this against my uh, 6 core Ryzen 5 machine, which is a 3600X. And uh, obviously, I can't, I can't run Final Cut on that, but it's slower to render videos, so that's why I decided to use my Mac Mini as my video editing computer. Because Final Cut is really freaking fast. And uh, I don't really think there is a hell of a lot to show on here. It's just generally a very nice and zippy machine. It's just a matter of only running all your software and uh, you're good to go. And uh, I basically just added video off external storage so the internal SSD is not a problem to me whatsoever. In fact, I'll show you the SSD that I have. It's just this thing. I bought this enclosure of AliExpress. It's an Oracle, I think. Yeah. And this converts MSATA SSDs to uh, USB. You can get them in USB C and USB A. I still need to get a USB uh, C to C cable for this, but. I have extra USB A ports now, so I don't really care. There's a 500 gig uh, 860 Evo M SATA in here. Uh, I got that for my uh, Dell Latitude. Uh, what kind of model was it again? 7450. But I replaced that with a MacBook Pro Retina 2015. So yeah, I decided to put the original SSD back in there and use the uh, 860 Evo in this. So now I've got 500 gigs of editing storage, which is fine for me. I basically delete all of my previous content once it has been rendered out and been sitting for about six months or so. So that's, uh, I really don't want to archive anything because it's not that important to me personally. So that is basically, in a nutshell, uh, my Mac Mini 2018 with the Satechi dock attached to it. And uh, overall I think it is a very nice combination, it's a very nice little machine. It takes a little space, it's very quiet, it doesn't run very cool at all but not terribly hot uh, either so overall I think it is very very nice and uh, I've really enjoyed the machine uh, having used it for just over a year now and uh, it's getting used more and more as time progresses so <laughs> we'll see whenever this machine chokes and I'm definitely very curious to pit this against the uh, iMac 2019 that we also have here in the house and uh, see how they compare uh, not counting for graphics, obviously, because that's just not a fair competition. That Retina 5K iMac has a uh, Radeon 580, or what was it, 570X, and this has Intel HD graphics, so yeah. But I think on a CPU level and on storage, they're very, very similar, and they're bound to be uh, very, very similar in performance as well. But uh, that's something we'll see in a future video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.